Hello and welcome. Very good afternoon. You're watching the big story here on Mirror Now. I am Afrida Rahman Ali. Our top focus remains on the US election results. Yes, there is suspense and anxiety and it's really turning out to be a fascinating game of number crunching. Eyes, all eyes in fact focused on those key states. And remember, at a time like this, counting is still on and it could be a make or break game in some of the key states. Now, let's in fact put things in perspective for our viewers. What's happening right now is we are looking at some of the key states of, say, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia on one hand, and also, of course, Nevada and Arizona on the other. So these are the states being watched out for. And at the same time, what's happening is there are two kinds of protests which have broken out. On one side, there are protesters that are asking for every last vote to be counted. Remember, Donald Trump had come out and said that he wants the counting to stop. So there are protests that have erupted after that statement. And on the other hand, there are also Trump supporters now who are asking access to some of these counting booths because they believe there is a derailment in the counting process. So all that is happening in the midst of some lawsuits being filed as well in some states where uh, for states like uh, Michigan and uh, Wisconsin that has turned blue from red, that is where Donald Trump is contesting and disputing the results. So that's the overall picture and uh, what we have uh, here on the show this afternoon. Suhasini Haider, National and Diplomatic Affairs Editor from The Hindu joining us. Also Anil uh, Trigunyat, former diplomat joining us here on the show and Vinay Tiwari, Managing Editor of Mirror Now. Thank you all so much for joining us here. Uh, this afternoon, it's going to be an interesting discussion because we are going to look at all the key issues and also I would like our panelists to help us uh, decode and deconstruct some of the complications that have emerged of late. Uh, let's first talk about uh, the statement that has come from Joe Biden as well, who is in a slightly better position as of now. We are looking at a figure of 253 for Joe Biden, uh, which is 17 short of the majority mark of 270. In fact, if he gets Nevada and Arizona, it looks like a done deal to me. So we'll have to uh, toss that question to the guest to find out whether it's really that simple or not. Uh, in terms of uh, history being created, what is being uh, talked about right now is that he's been in all previous records uh, by getting the most votes than any other presidential candidate in U.S. history. Let's take a listen into what Joe Biden had to say. After a long night of counting, it's clear that we're winning enough states to reach 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners. Okay, I'm going to, in fact, first uh, go across to Vinay Tiwari, Managing Editor of Mirror Now, to uh, give us uh, the current status of the states that we are talking about, Vinay. Uh, the key states, so to speak, and if you can take us through the numbers that we have accessed and the implications of it, because there are a lot of parameters, the percentage of votes that have been counted yet, and you've uh, said this before as well, that each state has a different system of counting and the local authorities will also have a say. But at the moment, when we talk about the fact that the states which will hold the key to victory, if you can take us through those states, please, Vinay. Right. So, I mean, as you mentioned, Afrida, uh, Joe Biden got Michigan and Wisconsin, which has given him a big boost, so to speak, and he's now within striking distance of coming close to the 270 mark. Uh, two other things that you mentioned are very critical, just to remind our viewers, uh, Joe Biden now has won more popular votes than any other U.S. Uh, you know, candidate in history. He's, uh, he's actually overtaken uh, Barack Obama's vote count. He's now crossed 70 million already. So that's, that's quite an achievement. And it also tells you the heavy turnout that seems to have happened uh, this year. But it all boils down to pretty much five states now, and those states are pretty much going down to the wire uh, and are states that will hold the key. The top of the line, Arizona, 11 electoral votes, so very significant, and Joe Biden is leading there. Slender margin, 50.5% vote share as opposed to uh, Trump's 48.1%. So the margin is not too huge, but it is still a lead. And if he, if he manages to get that, uh, that will be a huge leg up because that's 11 electoral votes. And remember, he's already at 264. Uh, Arizona, post after Arizona, Nevada is the one big state. Everybody is talking about six electoral votes. Very, 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 very thin margin here. 49.3% vote share as of now for Joe Biden, as opposed to 48.7% uh, for Donald Trump. So again, a very tight 
uh, contest there, but a contest that both sides are looking at very, very closely. Georgia, another state, a state that has had a series of, uh, you know, skirmishes over the past couple of months, uh, you know, a state which was quite fractious in the way the society was, op you know, interacting with each other. 16 electoral votes, very significant again. Uh, Joe Biden is trailing there, a very slender margin, 0.5%. It cannot get thinner than that. It's a 0.5% margin between the two candidates. Uh, so it's anybody's game uh, in Georgia and everybody's looking at Georgia very, very closely. Uh, Pennsylvania, another state that is going down to the wire, which everybody's looking at extremely closely. Uh, Joe Biden is trailing 48.1% vote share as of now, as opposed to Trump's 507 Now that's one state which the Democrats would be looking at very nervously because whoever gets Pennsylvania will have a huge advantage. Certainly, if Biden gets it, he's almost home and dry. North Carolina, the last in our list of the five states that we are looking at very closely. Again, 15 electoral votes and Joe Biden is trailing again. Slender margin, 48.7% vote share as opposed to 50.1% so far. Uh, but still, uh, it's a state that the Joe Biden camp is, is watching very nervously because they're kind of trailing as of now. So if they don't manage to win Pennsylvania or North Carolina. They'll pretty much have to get the rest of the three uh, to, to, to be comfortably home, so to speak, uh, Afrida. Right. Uh, thanks for that, Vinay. Uh, Suhasini, hi there. Uh, good afternoon. I want to ask you this question that most of these states, and I was just checking the last time, were held by the Republicans. Uh, so at this point, one of the things that are being very strongly uh, mentioned by a lot of people is that the mail-in ballots, which has delayed the whole process of counting, the mail-in ballots usually go in the favor of Democrats. How true is that? Because this has happened in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, I would think that, you know, voters from both sides would have opted for the mail-in ballots. Would that be a correct assessment? And the current scenario, like I was mentioning to you, to me, it looks like if you get Arizona and Nevada, Biden has 270. Yet there is so much being talked about why Pennsylvania and all other states matter equally uh, in the contest right now. Why is that? Okay, uh, your last question is basically, if you are saying Biden is 264, then you are including Arizona in it. Uh, at present, Arizona has not been called by half the uh, news yes, agencies. Yes, we are going by the CBS uh, figures, Suhasini, just to yeah, make it clear. So, Sorry. But, so therefore, uh, you are accepting Arizona is already in there. Um, essentially, uh, others are saying it's still at 253 minus Arizona. Um, now, the, the, the reason you were asking about the mail-in ballots uh, is that, yes, there is a general understanding in this election that mail-in ballots favor Democrats. This is because of two or three reasons. One, because those who uh, about a month ago or two months ago were really, really being uh, asked to come out and use the mail-in ballots were Democrat supporters. It was Mr. Biden that was using the mail-in ballots and saying, don't risk your vote. Don't risk uh, either because of the pandemic or because of the violence or because of something else, your vote not being counted. Because for the Democrats in 2016, the problem was not that they uh, lost the election completely. The problem was that although, say, for example, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote, they were not able to get their voters out in places that they had become complacent. Uh, they had all expected Hillary Clinton would win. Uh, so the Democrats have been pushing from an early stage for people to use the mail-in ballot and get their vote in early. Uh, the second reason has been one of demographics. If, uh, if in a very general way, uh, richer people actually opt to go and uh, stand in the lines because they don't have... Uh, they don't live in areas where there's much problem going and standing in a line and voting immediately, whereas uh, people from lower income demographics tend to prefer to the convenience of the, um, uh, of the mail-in ballot. And thirdly, uh, if you remember, Mr. Trump was actually against the mail-in ballots. He called them a fraud uh, way back in August. Uh, he actually defunded the postal system in America. He refused more funds for the uh, U.S. postal system, USPS as it is known, because he said he didn't want to see a surge in mail-in ballots. Um, so if Mr. Trump was telling his supporters don't use the mail-in ballots, the general assumption is that his supporters didn't use the mail-in ballots. I'll give you a, a, a skew though, because later in the campaign, the Republicans began to ask people to go for early voting and there was a lot of mobilization there. 
Look at the skew in Pennsylvania, for example, which would explain why uh, when Pennsylvania was so much in favor of Trump about a day ago, you know, 53 to 44 percent, today the difference is less than 2 percent between the two. Uh, and that's because if you look at the number of uh, voter, uh, mail-in voter ballots that were requested, because you have to ask for a mail-in ballot, get it, fill it up, and send it back, um, were from 1.6 million were from uh, Democrat supporters. 586,000 were from Republican supporters. So again, what you're seeing now is that those who voted the earliest are being counted the latest, which is why you're seeing those results come in where you're seeing the, the gap narrow in some places. But, you know, there are exceptions. Arizona, as you pointed out, Arizona in 50 years, 48 years, if you look at uh, 12 uh, presidential term, Arizona has only voted for a, a, a Democrat once, Bill Clinton in 1996. Arizona has voted only Republican so far. So it's a big thing if the Arizona vote does go to Biden. And in Arizona, one of the reasons for the seesaw is when it looked as if the election had completely gone in Biden's favor, a large dump of mail-in ballots came in Trump's favor. Uh, now, by and large, that's not been the case. That is an exception. And that's why Mr. Mr. Trump has made, these, has made these comments and he's given these tweets where he says, uh, you know, votes for Biden are showing up out of nowhere. Mail-in ballots are a fraud or irregular. It's because, it, by and large, they are going in. Mr. Uh, I'll come uh, back to you Biden's again for favor. further clarity on this. But just to uh, keep, uh, you know, right. Yes, uh, Mr. Anil Tribunet, you have served many missions across the world and in terms of the systems that we are talking about and what Suhasini also pointed out, that uh, there are complications involved and it has to be a thorough process of, uh, you know, counting, checking, cross-checking. Add to it the uh, issue of how every state has a different way of doing it. That further complicates matters, the, the way they get back uh, with the registered uh, numbers. That is, again, another process. Now, in your experience, do you think this is a lopsided system? Do you think there's a real problem with the way uh, the entire electoral process is done in the United States? No, I don't think so. In fact, you know, when we look at the U.S., we look at it as a single entity abroad. The fact remains is USA stands for United States of America. So the 50 states are there. And they have individually, they very eagerly protect their rights and they joined to become the United States. So therefore, each state has been provided adequate safeguards to represent itself. And therefore, they have a, a huge uh, uh, leeway in the kind of rules, regulations that they uh, really draft for themselves or they comply with them. So this has been happening. So, But I believe that the system is not that... Uh, uh, difficult or any system for that matter. It is the people who are going to, uh, if somebody loses the election and does not accept the election or the votes or try to accuse without any substantive reasons, then you cannot do anything. It happens in every election anywhere in the world. There are people who will be confusing. But as long as the election uh, is perceived, and you know, like there was a study which said that uh, as far as chances of fraud and other things are concerned, is 0.0009%. I mean, uh, at best, you can see that. So I do not see that this is a, a bad system. Mm. But last time, for example, when uh, Hillary right. lost, uh, then uh, they started talking about the electoral college system should be reformed. It is not good because the, anybody who wins, you know, gets all the votes. And so therefore, the state goes, that's the system that they have it. And that means you're representing the whole yes. state in uh, electoral college for that matter. So this is essentially just to keep the one country uh, in that. And you know the, how this 538 figure has arrived at. It is 435 of the Congress, uh, strength of the Congress, 100 is Senate and three for the DC. So the whole country has been represented in a very proper manner in that. Now, I do not see, I mean, as far as, uh, I mean, everybody forgets about uh, this mail-in voting. Okay. The basic reason for the mail-in voting was essentially the COVID-19. And the US has been the worst sufferer in this. And it was to avoid so that the, the super spreader events that President Trump eventually embarked upon uh, do not get ca caught. And for a great uh, much time, actually, uh, Biden did follow that. I mean, he did not have these big events and they tried to go online and all that. So therefore, whenever Trump went for his uh, people and he wanted everybody to come out and vote personally, and we saw that that happened and that's what he was expecting. So now he's seeing that every vote, the people who voted initially, right. they mostly were voting a 
because there was a bigger problem, and that was uh, the COVID-19. Everybody was suffering, a poor handling of Trump, but eventually the economy started faring better. Because if you remember, he's talking about last quarter, 33% increase. But before that, it was 34% decrease as well. So, I mean, uh, that these, there are key issues that impacted on us. Now he does not want, like last time in 2000, when we had seen in El Gore and Bush case, I mean, the court stopped the count. I mean, so, uh, I mean, they did not allow the vote. So that is something that is each state has. And that's why presently Pennsylvania governor is saying that he'll continue to the last vote. And that precisely should be the case, irrespective of whoever wins. Absolutely. There should be, uh, you know, a process of counting the till the last vote. Every vote should matter. Otherwise, your entire campaign of asking people to turn up to vote again, that that, that uh, would be questioned that, you know, uh, if people feel that their votes have not mattered. Because, you know, Vinay, I want to ask you this question that, you know, Wisconsin, for instance, has a rule that if the margin is less than 1%, then they, they, only then there can be a recount. So I want to ask you that, uh, what exactly can you dispute? What can you ask for? You can ask for a recount, but can you just say, stop counting? Is that even a possibility? No, but it, it isn't. Uh, to be honest, it isn't a possibility. You cannot stop the count just because you think you're winning. But look, uh, you know, in this case, now they've uh, you know, filed suits in four states. Uh, and obviously, the other states they believe hold the key uh, to their outcome. And it's a little bit of a reminder of what happened in 2000. And, and so, Asirin Mr. Trigiriath will, will, of course, remember that very, very well. Uh, that did yes. have a judicial intervention, but then the case was very specific. Uh, there were punch-in ballots that were disputed. I think there was about 500 or 600 odd votes uh, that were really under dispute. And there was a problem with that particular process. Uh, and hence, the court was moved. Uh, but then, remember that in the United States, the judiciary works a little differently from how it works here. Uh, you know, uh, there are discussions about the leanings of judges, which happens fairly openly, mm -hmm. in, especially in the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, Justice Barrett's appointment has you know, made enough discourse and talking points in the United States already. Uh, but Will the Supreme Court, uh, the federal Supreme Court, intervene the same way that it did in 2000 is something that we don't know. It is quite possible they may not, because if you have a large margin, uh, which is then being disputed by one camp or the other, the courts may not want to get into it. You know, in the 2000 election, for instance, the margin was so narrow, less than 600 votes, that it possibly required the courts to intervene because it was a matter of, you know, uh, you know, something very important. Also, remember that in that case, a lot of people felt in the United States that the case, the, the judgment, pretty much handed the case to George Bush, uh, and that Al Gore should not have conceded earlier at all, which he did. Uh, so there are yes. some parallels from 2000, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Donald Trump is an unpredictable man. And, you know, he is also mm -hmm. somebody who is not the one who is going to go out gracefully, as I can say. He will go out kicking and screaming. And part of the kicking and screaming strategy is going to take it to the legal route. How much the courts actually buy <laughs> yes. in with the, to these pleas and do they even want to interfere in it or not is something that will now need to be watched most carefully going forward. Mm. Yes, the, the point about lawsuits and, uh, you know, the legal battle, I want to go across to Suhasani on that point because, you know, uh, before that, just to put things in perspective again, the Trump campaign has indeed followed through with the threats that uh, Donald Trump initially made about taking things to court and this is the script that he has followed. The president's election campaign so far uh, has demanded a recount in Wisconsin and filed lawsuits in Michigan and Pennsylvania. In Georgia, Trump has filed a lawsuit seeking to pause vote count. So that is what is happening on ground. So as near, uh, the point that Vinay also made uh, about uh, what happened in 2000 and it dragged for, I think, about three weeks uh, and then Al Gore conceded. Uh, do you see this dragging that long uh, here as well? You know, um, I think we'll have the answer in the next 24 hours about that. Firstly, are any of the courts going to get involved now that Mr. Trump has gone ahead and filed these various challenges? One of them is really just asking for more access for his team to the voting uh, booths. Um, what, uh, the question is, will any of the state courts uh, accept uh, any of these challenges? So in case the vote is not paused, you were asking about, you know, pausing the actual counting. In case that doesn't happen, I think this will go down to the last vote. And it is a slow process. Uh, you can see how, you know, uh, you're seeing uh, even today the counting in some of the states, uh, which are at the end, is 78 percent, 84 percent. It's going very slowly, but each vote is being counted. Um, so I think what will happen is with, uh, uh, you know, uh, as your number said, with 
uh, uh, with Biden at 264. The next state that is called in his favor essentially puts him over the 270 mark. I think there is going to be a certain optic that will come from that. If Mr. Biden crosses the 270 mark, it will be that much dif more difficult for Mr. Trump to uh, pose very, very substantial challenges to him. Because then there is an optic that this is the president-elect. Uh, uh, and I think Mr. Trump realizes that, which is why he's trying to stop the next okay. uh, vote uh, announcement from happening. I think Nevada will be in the next couple of hours, uh, will, will go ahead and announce its results, after which uh, you might then see some of the others, Arizona and, and, uh, and Pennsylvania and all the rest, come through. But if Nevada does, um, uh, does tip uh, Mr. Biden over uh, the top, then it will be that much more difficult to really launch a challenge. What might happen is that the process for uh, Mr. Biden will continue, as it did for Mr. Bush in 2000, and the challenges will keep coming. But, um, you know, and, and, and when I was explaining right. that story, you know, a year later, journalists got together, press organizations got together and actually said, let's actually count what happened in Florida. And they found that in those uh, particular, survey, uh, particular counties, Mr. Gore would have won by about 170 votes. Uh, so in fact, he did win both the, the popular vote and the electoral college, but it was too late by then. Yes, and which is why I was asking this question, and uh, Vinay also made this similar point that many believe that Al Gore should not have conceded. Uh, uh, Mr. Anil Trigunia, uh, you know, the reason again why I was asking you is, is this a fair system is because ultimately it has come down to five states. Now, out of 50 states, should it be like that? That, you know, is this a fair process of representation? I want you want your thoughts on that because, uh, again, highest number of popular vote in U.S. history. Despite that, the man has to struggle this much. I mean, so near yet so far for Joe Biden. Well, you are talking about Joe Biden. I think the pop this time uh, what I felt probably was going to happen is what happened in 2016 to Hillary Clinton. I mean, that time it might as possible that the, <laughs> till now at least it was possible that uh, Biden was getting less number of votes, but more states actually. The popular vote was, uh, count was much higher towards Trump side. I mean, he, despite whatever you may say, 50% of the votes have gone to Trump. And that too, when mm -hmm. he has had so much of criticism and all. Now, the fact remains is as far as the system has come up, I mean, I believe that if you go by the U.S. history, so it has evolved from there. I mean, it is not something that has been uh, devised overnight or some. Uh, you can change the rules uh, exactly like that. Because, see, the states have to agree. And uh, therefore, I feel that uh, if the system works, it has worked all this while. I mean, how many times did we have uh, this kind of an issue that has cropped up now? It has cropped up because when, and it happens in every country, every democracy at least, wherever people, those who've been, and if it's a very close victory, then obviously you want to have a recount, you want to go in for again or represent or whatever, go to the court and get other redressal mechanisms. But in this particular case, what I find is that it is, uh, uh, it smacks of a bit of uh, uh, arrogance because it is started off much before that you would not want to see the absentee ballots to be counted, whereas it is legally permitted in the country. So that is the thing. Secondly, there is a provision for everything. I mean, in this system, I suppose none of them wins or there's an equal this thing on the speaker of the parliament can, uh, I mean, uh, of the Congress can be appointed. So that is not uh, uh, such a thing. And the Senate can uh, elect a vice president if there is an equal right. number of votes. So they have provided for every single provision uh, as far as I consider. But at the end of the day, uh, the unhappy okay. people... And those who will not go by the rules or will not uh, accept the judgment, there, what can you do? I mean, you have to agree to the verdict of the people at the end of the day. And people can only give the verdict when their vote is counted. Those who have, uh, I mean, there is a chance of a fraud. There is a chance of uh, some kind of uh, uh, misdeeds everywhere. It's possible. Humans are involved at the end of the day. I mean, in India, we used to have all the ballot boxes. The people used to run away and they stuff it at right. one time and press it. Uh, so this happens everywhere, actually. But in this particular case, I think there is a margin of error is yes. much less.
Okay. So, you know, this is going to be a long drawn process anyway, uh, because of course, uh, once this uh, entire process of announcing results is over, there is going to be a formal process of the electoral college representatives meeting in the state cap capitals to formally cast their votes. That is <coughs> going to happen on the 14th of December. And from there on, it will all culminate on the 20th of January, 2021 is when uh, inauguration day will happen and the president elect will be formally sworn into office. So we are going to be talking about the US elections for quite a long time from now. Perhaps I would like to thank my guests for joining us this afternoon, Suhas Nihaidar and Mr. Anil Trigunyat. Thanks very much, Vinay, for giving us your perspectives as well.